going somewhere? Yes. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. No, we are not. Yes. No. Yes. Shut up! Yes. Disney's Lone Ranger was something of a train wreck at the box office this weekend, hauling in just $48.9 million in the U.S. and taking second place to Universal's animated family film Despicable Me 2. The flop is a major embarrassment for Disney, which spent a whopping $250 million to make the Western and brings in mind last year's epic John Carter. Can the house that Walt built remain the reigning champion of family entertainment? Joining me now to discuss this is movie critic Kevin Kyes in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Kevin, uh, this had the makings of a great hit. What, what went wrong? Well, a lot of times when, you, when they try to put together a hit, they go by the formula. And they go by the formula of taking Gore Verbinski, who did the Pirates movies, and they get uh, Johnny Depp in there as well. And they take an old property, but, but sometimes, sometimes things get lost in the translation and things don't necessarily launch. Now they tried this with pirates way back in, uh, you know, last, you know, about eight, 10 years ago. The problem with this is even though pirates was a different, was sort of like a dead type of movie. No one did pirate movies at the time and this relaunched it. They were trying to kind of recreate lightning in the bottle as they did w to do with, uh, with Westerns and Westerns, you know, as much as, um, as much as Westerns are an American type film, they don't tend to do well in the modern box office. So it was a bit of a gamble to begin with, and they kind of maybe didn't get the formula quite right. And if you got to make tweaks and changes throughout, sort of like you know changing the horse uh, while you're riding, sometimes that can cause a stumble and sometimes a failure. Tell us, how, they, how did they manage to spend $250 million on, on a Western? Because the, the Westerns I saw as a kid, I think they spent 250 bucks on, if that. <laughs> Well, you know, of course, uh, movie productions has gotten much, much bigger. Uh, when you throw in somebody like Gore Verbinski, who is kind of known for going pretty high in his budgets, I mean, his the, the last couple Pirates films, uh, well, not the most recent one, but the three that he did, uh, the first one had a relatively low budget, and the budget just skyrocketed after that. A lot of times it's for effects, it's for big shooting, it's for big action sequences. Sometimes there's digital work that's done that you don't even recognize necessarily, and you throw in a big, huge movie star like Johnny Depp, who's going to take a big chunk of that as well. Uh, it's you can easily get a movie to balloon past 200 million if you're not keeping an eye on it. Especially a movie like this that was kind of plagued with reshoots and rewrites. So when you have to go back to production, that can cost more. So it's some. Do you think something s systemic going on at Disney? Are they are they just relying too much on special effects and r rather than you know having a great script, a great story that keeps you on the edge of your seat? I, I wouldn't say this is unique to Disney. One of the things, if you look at like Disney's box office performance, its biggest movies just historically and of recent years are franchise pictures or, or branded pictures. The Pixar films, they've got Marvel now, they've got Star Wars coming up. So they've got these things in their wheelhouse that, that work and they are, their people know what to expect. What they're trying to do here is they've been trying to start new franchises whenever they can. It was successful with the Pirates, of the Caribbean movie, but Jerry Bruckheimer came in and did other, uh, you know, famously not performing well movies like uh, Prince of Persia and uh, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. These are movies where they tried to spark a new franchise. It just didn't work. It's a gamble, and actually, all all the all the major production houses are doing that. It's it's not a unique thing to Disney. Everyone's looking for the next big franchise that then they can make three or four movies on as opposed to just one big hit. And I guess the saving grace here might be that uh, sometimes Johnny Depp movies do better overseas um, and the bulk of the money comes from overseas. So I guess that's some good news, right? We've got about Abs 10 seconds. Yeah, he makes about 65 to 75% of his box office overseas. So there's hope. Uh, and it only opened in four major markets this week, so we'll see what happens. We will see. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your time. Thank you.